Good day everyone, I'm Jennifer Casabar, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I am going to discuss Correction Pillar, the fourth pillar of the Philippine criminal justice system. So the contents of our presentation are as follows. We have the definition of correction, we have the principal aims of penology, punishment and the criminal, dual role of jail, types of jail, importance of jail, the Philippine prison system, categories of prisoners, and community-based treatment program. So let's start with the term correction. We all know that correction pillar is the fourth pillar of the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay? It is concerned with the custody, supervision, and rehabilitation of criminal offenders. So the primary concerns of correction pillar is what to do with the prisoners okay? in terms of their custody, in terms of their supervision, and especially with their rehabilitation. We have also penology. Penology refers to the study of punishment for crimes or of criminal offenders. Okay? So when we say penology, we are um, primarily dealing with punishment for crimes of the criminal offenders. Okay? So punishment when we are pertaining to penology. Penology was derived from the Latin word buena, which means pain or suffering. Okay? The primary concern of penology is what to do with the prisoners. An old approach of this fundamental cause for his elimination or at least banishment and isolation from society. But the era of purely vindictive societal reaction has given way to the humane treatment of criminal offenders, resulting in the present-day policy on rehabilitation or reformation. Okay? During the old practice kasi, uh, maraming mga iba't ibang ways kung paano po bigyan ng punishment ang isang criminal offenders. We have banishment, we have isolation, we have also death penalty, corporal punishment, and so on. But in today's era, we are no longer using um, those kinds of punishment, but rather to uh, most humane treatment ang pinaka main idea na ngayon ng um, penology. Okay. Today, the correctional programs are administered apart from the parole and probation programs. The latter two programs or systems are being administered by the Parole and Probation Administration. So, even the correctional institutions are administered separately. We have the city and municipal jails uh, by the Bureau of Jail of Management and Penology or the BJMP. The provincial jails by the provincial executive or, or the provincial government. And also, we have the national prisoners or national prisons and penal colonies by the Bureau of Corrections. Okay? The BGMP took the place of the INP PNP while BOC took the place of Bureau of Prisons. Okay? Corrections uh, is mostly dealing with supervisions and uh, rehabilitation of the offenders. Okay? Diba nga sa fourth pillar, sabi natin, once the offender uh, is convicted by final judgment, he needs to uh, he needs to suffer the punishment. Okay? Wherein he will be in prison, he needs to serve the um, uh, punishment na ibinigay ng court natin. Penology is otherwise known as penal science. 
Penology is the division of criminology that deals with prison management and treatment of offenders. Okay? So, penology is one of the division of criminology wherein this is pertaining to on how are you going to manage prisons and also what will be the treatment that you need to give to the offenders. We have also penal management. So when we say penal management, it is a manner or practice of managing or controlling places of confinement as in jails or prison. So ano ba yung mga practice na ginagawa ng ating mga kulungan, kagaya ng mga prisons or jail, okay, in terms of on how are they going to control such confinement of those offenders. Okay, that is penal management. So, what is punishment? Punishment is the redress that the state takes against an offending member of society that usually involve pain and suffering. And punishment is the penalty imposed on an offender for a crime or wrongdoing. Ito po yung parusa na ibinibigay doon sa mga nagkakasala. Okay? It usually involve pain and suffering. But like what I have said a while ago that in this new era, we are no longer dealing with pain and suffering but rather uh, with the reformation and rehabilitation of the offenders. So, let's move on now to jails. Okay. So, what are jails? Jails are primarily adult penal institutions used for the detention of law violators. Its original function was to house pre-trial detainees or to serve as place for the detention of accused persons charged with having committed crimes. Okay? So, jails is primarily for adult penal institution. Okay? Pero po, ang pinaka-original na function ng jail ay para po sa mga pre-trial detainees or ibig sabihin po yan, yung mga nag-undergo pa lamang po ng kanilang hearing. Okay? They are still uh, uh, a detention or a detainees. They are still under detention inside the jails. Okay? Um, and also, for jails, uh, ang mga nakulong po dito ay yung mga undergoing trial. So, ibig sabihin, nagihiring pa lang. Undergoing preliminary investigation. And also, those who are convicted of final judgment who is suffering from less than 3 years of imprisonment. So, ibig sabihin po, meron din po mga convicted na mga uh, uh, offender na nakakulong sa jails, pero po ang kanilang uh, punishment lamang po ay 3 years and below. Okay? Kasi po ang jails talaga, para lamang po yan sa mga hindi pa po convicted. Okay? Yan ang pinaka-original function sa mga hindi pa convicted. So, ibig sabihin, nag-a-undergo pa lamang po ng hearing or ng mga preliminary investigation. But then, um, aside from that, yun nga po, ang isa po doon na nagsuserve ng sentence sa jails ay yung mga meron pong sentence yung hindi po uh, tataas sa tatlong taon. So, ibig sabihin, less than 3 years ang kanilang imprisonment. So, jails po yon No need to transfer to uh, national uh, penitentiary. So, what are the dual role of jail? So, number one, number one role of jail is a place of detention for those awaiting final disposition of criminal action. Okay? So, like what I have said, sabi ko nga po, yan po ang detention or ang kulungan ng isang offender na naghihintay pa lamang po sa disposition or decision ng kanilang kaso. Okay? And, number two, for the service of short sentence of not more than, yan, letter A, six months, for those categorized as city or municipal prisoners, and not more than three years, 
or with a fine not more than 1,000 pesos for those categorized as provincial prisoners. So, yan nga po, ang pangalawang role po ng jail eh, para po uh, sa service of short sentences, basta po hindi po aabot ng tatlong taon uh, pataas. Okay. We have here some types of jail. So, number one, we have lock-up jail. Number two, we have ordinary jails. And number three, we have workhouses, jail farms, or cops. So, ang lock-up jail po, this is a security facility that is common to police stations used for temporary confinement of an individual held for investigation. So, kung aware po kayo dun sa mga selda, sa loob po ng mga police station, ang tawag po doon ay lock-up jail. That is just a temporary confinement para po doon sa mga individual na under ng investigation. Ang tawag po doon ay lock-up jail. So, take note. Number two, ordinary jails. Yan po yung pinaka-common kung saan po dinidetain yung mga convicted offenders who will serve a sentence less than three years. So, yan na po yung tinatawag nating mga district jail, municipal jail, Okay? Or city jail. Okay? They are considered as ordinary jails. Okay? We have also workhouses, jail farms, or camp. Yung mga kampo. Okay? A facility that houses minimum custody offenders who are serving short sentences or those who are undergoing constructive work programs. It provides full employment of prisoners remedial services, and constructive leisure time activities. So, mostly for workhouses, jail farms, or yung mga kampo, ang nakahouse po dyan ay yung may mga uh, type ng offender na minimum custody lamang po. And also, those who are serving short sentences or undergoing constructive work programs. Okay? So, let's move on also to prison. Okay? Magkaiba po ang jail sa prison. Okay? There's a big difference between the two. Okay? Because for prison, it houses prisoners who by reason of their sentence may be deprived of liberty for more than three years. It is administered by the state or the national government. Okay? So, Kung kanina po dun sa jail ay ang isang role po dyan ay para sa mga short sentences which is less than 3 years. Dito po sa prison, yan po ang, ang confinement para po dun sa mga offender na nagsaserve ng sentence na more than 3 years. So take note. Prison po ang tawag po pagka ang mga naka-house po dyan ay more than 3 years ang kanilang mga sentensya. At ang mga prison po ay na-administer po yan ng ating national government. Unlike po sa jail. Okay? Sa jail kasi, we have provincial jail to be administered by the local or the provincial government. And for um, uh, ordinary jails is uh, DILG or Department of Interior and Local Government which is on the part of BJMP or Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. So we have categories of prisoners. So categories of prisoners dalawa po yan. We have prisoner and detainees. Prisoner po those who are already convicted. For detainees Ibig sabihin po niyan, those who are still awaiting uh, disposition of their criminal action or yung mga nag-undergo pa lang po ng hearing or hindi pa po mga convicted. Okay? Detainees po ang tawag doon. So, we have also classification of prisoner under PD-29 or Presidential Decree 29. We have city or municipal prisoner. Number two, we have provincial prisoner. And number three, all other prisoners are con considered national prisoners. So, number one, city or municipal prisoners, 
These are persons who by reason of their sentence may be deprived of liberty for not more than six months. So take note, when we say city or municipal prisoners, ang kanilang sentensya ay uh, not more than six months. Okay. The imposition of subsidiary imprisonment shall not be taken into consideration in fixing the status of prisoner here under except when the sentence imposes a fine only. But for provincial prisoners, okay, persons who by reason of their sentence may be deprived of liberty not more than three years or are subjected to a fine not more than 1,000 pesos or both, but if prisoners receive two or more sentences in the aggregate exceeding the period of three years, he shall not be taken into considered a provincial prisoner. The imposition of subsidiary shall not be taken into consideration in fixing the status of prisoner here under except when the sentence imposes a fine only. Okay, so take note. City or municipal prisoner, not more than six months. And for provincial prisoners, is not more than three years with a fine of not more than 1,000 pesos. And for number three, all other prisoners are considered national prisoners. We have also types of detainees. Okay. Sabi ko nga po, detainees po, hindi pa po sila convicted. Okay? Number one, undergoing investigation. So, ibig sabihin, niimbestigan pa lang po yung kanyang kaso. So, nandun pa lamang po siya sa lock-up jail. Yun po yung common doon sa mga police station. Okay? Number two, awaiting or undergoing trial. Nagihiring pa lamang po. Wala pa pong final na decision. At ganun din po yung mga awaiting final judgment. Nagihinti na lamang po ng decision ng korte. Yan po yung tatlong uri ng detainees. Okay? So, let's move on now to organizational setup of Bureau of Correction. Okay? For Bureau of Correction, we have the Philippine Prison System. The BUCOR or Bureau of Correction was renamed Bureau of Correction under Executive Order 292 passed during the Aquino administration. The head of BUCOR is Director of Prison who is appointed by the President with the confirmation of the Commission on Appointment. So, ibig sabihin po niyan, ang Pinakauna pong pangalan ng Bureau of Correction ay Bureau of Prison. Narename lang po yan by virtue of Executive Order 292 during the Aquino Administration. Ang tawag po sa head ng BUCOR ay Director of Prison, which is i-appoint po yan ng ating mahal na Pangulo, pero po dapat po meron pong confirmation ng Commission on Appointment. Okay? The Bureau of Correction supervises and control all national prisons or penitentiaries charged with the safekeeping of all insular prisoners. So, I like you to remember na ang Bureau of Correction po ay mga uh, may supervision at control sa lahat po ng national prison sa buong uh, bansa natin. Okay. They are charged with the safekeeping of insular prisoner. So, pag sinabi pong insular prisoner, yan po ay yung may mga sentence siyang 3 years and above. Okay. Insular prisoners is otherwise known as national prisoners. At ang kanilang sentence ay more than 3 years. Okay. We have the coverage of Bucor. Letter A, we have New Bilibid Prison, which is located to Muntinlupa City. Okay? We have there the maximum security, and we have two uh, satellite camps. Ang National Bilibid Prison po, meron pong dalawang satellite camps. We have Camp Sampagita and Camp Bukang Liwayway. For Camp Sampagita, yan po yung medium security prison. 
For camp bukang liwayway, yan po yung minimum security prison. Okay? For letter B, we have CIW or Correctional Institution for Women, which is located to Mandalo yung city. Okay? That is to be discussed later on sa mga succeeding slides natin. Letter C, meron naman po tayong tinatawag na mga prisons and penal farms, kagaya po ng Sablayan, Prison and Penal Farm, located po sa Occidental Mindoro. We have also Iwahig Prison and Penal Farm, located po sa Puerto Princesa City, Palawan. We have also Davao Prison and Penal Farm, located at Panabu Central, Davao. Okay. Number four, San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm, located at Zambanga City. Number five, Iloilo Prison and Penal Farm, located at Iloilo City. And number six is Leyte Regional Prison, which is located at Abuyog, Leyte. Okay? <clears throat> so, i-discuss muna natin mauna ang Bilibid Prison. Okay? 1847, The first Bilibid prison was constructed. Okay? The Bilibid prison is the central place of confinement for Filipino prisoner. Okay? It is constructed in radial spokes, made of strong adobe stone so sturdy, and used as Manila City Jail, famously known as May Halige State. Okay? Ang Old Bilibid Prison po ay constructed way back 1847. Ito po ang pinaka-main or ang pinaka-central place doon sa mga uh, kulungan ng ating mga Filipino prisoner. Okay? So, ito po yung uh, construction ng Bilibid Prison. It is Rachel Spokes Wheel. Okay? Which is made of ado uh, sturdy stones. Okay? Nineteen thirty-six, City of Manila exchanged its Muntinlupa property composed of 552 hectares with the Bureau of Prisons lot in Manila. This Muntinlupa site was originally intended as site for boys training school. So, during 1936 po, nakipagpalitan po ng lupa yung Manila doon sa Muntinlupa. Okay? Uh, ang Muntinlupa po, ang pinaka-original po yan is intended po yan as boys training school. Pero yan na po ngayon yung New Bilibid Prison. The New Bilibid Prison operates two satellite units. We have number one, Camp Bukang Liwayway. It houses minimum security prisoners. Okay? Camp Bukang Liwayway po, number one po yan na uh, a satellite ng New Bilibid Prison wherein ang mga nakakulong po dyan ay yung may mga Minimum security prisoners, okay? Pag sinabing minimum security prisoners po, ang example po niyan ay yung uh, malapit na pong makalaya. For example, 6 months na lang po yung natitira sa kanilang sentence. Ililipat na po sila sa kamukang liwayway. And also those who are over 65 years old. And ganun din po yung mga trustees, mga handicap, and the like. Okay? Yun po ang mga naka-house sa minimum security prison, which is the Camp Bukang Liwayway. And the second satellite is Camp Sampagita. It houses medium security prisoners. Okay? This is also the location of youth rehabilitation centers and location of the RDC or reception and diagnostic center. Bilibid Prison is specialized in industrial type of vocational trainings such as furniture, shoe repair, blacksmith and tinsmith, automotive mechanic, automotive or automobile bodybuilding, electronics, watch repair, carpentry, rattan furniture, gardening, poultry, 
piggery and animal husbandry. So, marami pong mga industrial type uh, na uh, in-specialize sa loob po ng Bilibid Prison. New Bilibid Prison offers high school course which was established in 1956 for prisoners. Okay, so doon po, doon sa kanilang educational program, nag-offer sila ng high school course para po sa mga hindi pa po nakapagtapos ng high school. At ganun din po sa college. Okay, college education which is in partnership with PNU or Philippine Normal University. Let's move on now to San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm. This was established by the Spaniards in 1869. For the confinement of political offenders. So, take note, originally, ang San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm po ay para po sa mga political offenders. It was named after the founder, Captain Ramon Blanco, kaya po tinawag siyang San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm. Pinangalan po siya doon po sa pinaka-unang founder ng San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm. Okay. And did you know that Dr. Jose Rizal was among of the prisoners before in San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm? San Ramon Prison and Penal Farm has 1,546 hectares. The main product is copra, which is one of the biggest source of income for the entire Bucor, and also producing rice, corn, coffee, and cattle. Okay, that is San Ramon. We have also Iwahig Prison and Penal Farm, established originally for incorrigibles by Governor Forbes. This is the first contingent of prisoners from the Belibid Prison confined in Iwahig revolted against the authorities. Okay? Ang Iwahig po, originally established po yan para sa mga incorrigibles. So, ano bang ibig sabihin pag tinawag natin incorrigible? Okay? It means, hindi na po uh, kayang baguhin yung mga prisoner po na hindi na po kayang baguhin yung mga pag-uugali. Kung baga, yun na talaga sila. That is so-called incorrigibles. But then, in November 1, 1905, under Article uh, 1407, It was converted. So, na-convert na po yung institution for incorrigibles or from incorrigibles to a prison for well-behaved. Dati po, para po sa mga incorrigible, but then na-convert siya as prisoners for well-behaved. Okay, bakit sinabing well-behaved? Okay, because... Iwahig Prison and Penal Farm has no walls. Okay? Only mutual trust and confidence between the wards and the prison authorities keep them together. So today, Iwahig is one of the most or the best open penal institution in the world. Okay? Pinaka uh, uh, best open penal institution sa buong mundo ang Iwag Prison Penal Farm dahil po wala po itong bakod. It has no walls. Okay? Bakit walang bakod? Siyempre, Iwag Prison and Penal Farm is located in an island. Okay? Sa isa pong island. Kaya po hindi po uh, hindi po or imposible po na magkaroon po ng Uh, mga pugante o yung mga uh, possible na tumakas. Okay. Iwai Prison and Penal Farm has land area of 36,000 hectares. Actually, Iwai po ang pinaka maluwang na kulungan sa buong uh, bansa natin. Okay. It was divided into four sub-colonies. Namely, Santa Lucia, Inagawan, Montibol, and Central Sub-Colony. Iwahig Prison and Penal Farm administered Tagumpay Settlement, composed of 1,000 hectares land, divided into 6 hectares. 
This is distributed to release inmates who desire to live in the settlement. Okay? Ito po ang tinatawag natin na tagumpay settlement. Okay? Para po ito sa mga release inmates, so ibig sabihin tapos na po nilang i-serve yung kanilang sentensya but then they are still willing to live in the settlement. Okay? So, siguro, the reason therein is wala na silang mga kapamilya na pwede nilang balikan or talagang yun na talaga yung nakasanayan nila doon nila gustong manirahan. Okay? It is um, given or distributed to those who are inmates na gusto pang tumira doon sa loob ng uh, penal farm. UI Prison Penal Farm, one of the important features of UI is the privilege granted to the colonists to have their family live with them in the penal farm. Okay? Yun po ang pinakamagandang feature actually ng iwahi. Kasi po, meron po mga privilegio na binibigay sa mga colonists na mga prisoner okay, na pwede nilang makasama ang kanilang kapamilya sa loob ng kulungan. Okay? So, pagkakasama nila ang kanilang kapamilya sa loob ng kulungan, syempre po, ang kanilang education, ang kanilang uh, mental health, okay, and ang kanilang gastusin ay syempre po, pwede pong i-provide yan ng settlement, okay, or ng penitential. The principal products are rice, corn, logs, minor forest products, and kettles. We have also Davao Personal Penal Farm, established on January 21, 1932 under Article uh, or under Act Number 3732 and Proclamation Number 4140 of 1931. Okay, so nakreate po ang Davao Personal Penal Farm by virtue of Act Number 3732. Okay, the first contingent of prisoners that opened the colony was led by General Paulino Santos. Siya po ang founder and director of prison ng Davao Prison and Penal Farm. It consists of 18,000 hectares. It was mostly devoted to abaca. Davao Prison and Penal Farm, during 1942, it is used as a concentration camp for American prisoners of war. Okay? Noong 1942 po, that is a World War II. Okay? Ginawa po nilang kampo ang Davao Prison and Penal Farm ng mga Amerikano. Okay? It was destroyed by Japan during the war. Okay? Yung Davao Prison and Penal Farm po, nasira po yan dahil po sa giyera way back 1942. Okay? Sinira po yan ng mga Hapon. Okay? August 1946, Nare-establish po ito. Okay. Main source of income of the Bucor from its vast abaca, rice and agricultural products engaged in a joint venture with Tagum Development Company wherein there are 3,000 hectares of banana plantation. Yan, that is the Davao main camp. We have also CIW. Okay, CIW is Correctional Institution for Women. This was established in 1931 under Article or Act Number 3579. It has a land area of 18 hectares, which is located in Mandaluyong City. Female prisoners are originally confined in Bilibid Prison. Okay, but then, dahil po nakreate na po ang CIW. Transfer na po lahat ng mga convicted female offender sa CIW. Okay, and then, dahil din po sa CIW, nagkaroon po ng position para po sa female superintendent way back 1934. Okay, this is the only penal institution for female prisoners. Okay. The vocational courses are dressmaking, beauty parlors, handicraft, cloth weaving, and slipper making, and the likes. 
We have also Sablayan Prison and Penal Farm, established in 1954 under Presidential Proclamation Number no. 72, due to the tremendous increase of population in the new believed prison. Di ba kasi nagkaroon na ng overcrowding, overpopulation doon po sa new believed, kaya nagconstruct po sila ng panibago ulit na kulungan. And that is Sablayan Prison Penal Farm. It has a land area of 16,000 hectares at a virgin land in Sablayan, Occidental Mindoro. Okay? The principal product is rice. It is self-sufficient and, and produces vegetable, not only for Sablayan but also for the entire National Bilibid Prison. Okay? And also, correctional centers... Letter A, we have rehabilitation centers for youth offenders para po doon sa mga uh, nag-range from ang kanilang edad ay from 9 to uh, below 18 years old. Okay? To be committed to the care of the DSWD. So, yung mga youthful offender po na may edad na 9 hanggang 18, pababa ay Ibibigay po ang kustodiya sa DSWD or Department of Social Welfare and Development. We have also drug addicts rehabilitation centers. These centers have been established for the treatment of drug dependents. The existing treatment and rehabilitation centers operated and maintained by the NBI of Tagaytay City and being funded by the board. Okay? And we have also rehabilitation and treatment programs. Ito po yung mga uh, rehabilitation and treatment programs sa loob po ng kulungan. Okay? This can be carried out through the process of classification, custody, and control of prisoners. So, they are um, uh, giving those rehabilitation para po sa pagbabago ng mga offenders natin, kagaya po ng employment of prisoners or yung mga tinatawag nating livelihood programs. Okay, yan po yung masasabak po sa uh, mga iba't ibang livelihood na programa sa loob ng kulungan, kagaya po ng um, pagkikreate ng, ng tawag dito, uh, ng mga bags, ng mga shoes, ng mga cloth wavering, mga electricity, Okay, paggawa ng mga nasirang uh, tawag dito, mga appliances, mga automobile, uh, automobile and body uh, body making, okay? Body built, okay? And the likes, marami po 'yan, mga paggawa ng mga sabon, mga iba't ibang klase ng mga design sa mga tables, mga lampshades. Marami po mga livelihood programs actually na ibinibigay po ng ating mga kulungan para doon sa mga offenders natin. Nang sa ganon, paglabas po nila, pwede po nilang may apply yun sa kanilang sarili. For example, pwede po silang mag-establish ng kanilang mga business or pwede po silang mag-apply ng trabaho na related doon sa mga kanilang mga livelihood programs sa loob ng kulungan. We have also religious services educational programs, recreational programs, library services, health and medical services, and we have also counseling. Let's move on now to the last topic, which is the community-based treatment program. Okay? Kung kanina po, pinag-usapan po natin yung mga institutional-based program, yung mga livelihood, religious, okay? Meron din po tayong tinatawag na community-based treatment program, wherein Ang treatment po ng offender, instead po na sa loob ng kulungan, is within the community. Pwede po nilang iserve ang kanilang sentence sa community. Meron po tayo dyan, probation. Probation po is a disposition whereby a defendant, after conviction of an offense, the penalty of which does not exceed 6 years of imprisonment, is released subject to the conditions imposed by the releasing court, under the supervision of a probation officer. Ang probation po ay binibigay doon po sa may mga imprisonment or may mga sentensya na hindi po mag-exit ng anim na taon. 
Okay? Pag po nakalaya sila, so ibig sabihin nasa community, hindi po ibig sabihin na talagang total na may, na na malaya. Rather, meron po silang mga iba't ibang kondisyon na kailangan nilang sundin habang sila ay nasa community. Because, if they violated those conditions, pwede po silang bumalik ulit sa kulungan. We have also parole. The parole is the process of suspending the sentence of a convict after having served the minimum of his sentence without granting him pardon and prescribing the terms upon which the sentence shall be suspended. So, ang parol po binibigay din po yun sa offender. Basta po naserve na po niya yung kanyang minimum ng sentence bago po siya mabigyan ng freedom. Okay? We have also executive clemency such as amnesty, commutation, reprieve, and pardon. When we say executive clemency po, yan po yung mga act of grace na, or yung mga pagpapatawad ng ating mahal na Pangulo okay, doon sa mga offenders. Kagaya po ng, yan nga yung amnesty, computation of sentence, reprieve, and pardon. Okay? So, that's the end of our discussion for our chapter 5, which is entitled as um, Correction Pillar or the fourth pillar of the Philippine criminal justice system. So, to be updated for more videos, can you please click the notification bell, okay? So, that's all for today. So, thank you and stay safe.